Good morning. Welcome to Expedition Church of the Triad. And thank you for coming today. Let's praise and worship the Lord together. Hallelujah. Come, now is the time to worship. Come, now is the time to give your heart. Come, just as you are to worship. Come, just as you are before your God. Come, come, now is the time to worship, come, now is the time to give your heart, come, just as you are to worship, come, just as you are before your God. Come. One day every tongue will confess you are God. One day every knee will bow. Still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now. One day every tongue will confess you are God. One day every knee will bow. Still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now. Come. 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 Hungry I come to you, for I know you satisfy. I am weary, but I know your love does not run dry. So I wait for you. So I wait for you. I'm falling on Offering all of me. Jesus, you're all this heart is living for. Broken, I run to you, for your arms are open wide. I am weary, but I know your touch restores. So I wait for you, so I wait for you, I'm falling on my knees, offering all of me, Jesus, you're all this heart is living for. I'm falling on my knees, offering all of me. Jesus, you're all this heart is living for. Jesus, this heart is all you're living for. In the glory of your presence, 
I find rest for my soul in the depths of your love I find peace makes me whole I love, I love I love your presence I love, I love I love your presence I love, I love I love you, Jesus I love, I love I love your presence In the glory Of your presence I find rest for my soul in the depths of your love. I find peace makes me whole. I love, I love I love your presence I love, I love I love your presence I love, I love I love you, Jesus I love, I love I love your In your presence, you shelter my heart. In your presence, your light quells the dark. I live in your strength and rest in your love I'll keep my heart in your presence I am bought by the blood of your precious Son, Jesus speaks in your presence for me. I will ever and forever praise your holy name. I'll keep my heart In your presence
at the sound of your great name. All the earth rejoices at the sound of your great name. I will sing, I will sing, I will sing. I've been saved by your grace in your presence. I am healed, I'm made whole through the life in your word. I will ever and forever praise your holy name. I'll keep my heart. in your presence at the sound of your great name all the earth rejoices at the sound of your great name I will sing, I will sing, I will sing in your presence, you shelter my heart in your presence, your light quells the dark I live in your strength and rest in your love I'll keep my heart I'll keep my heart I'll keep my heart in your presence. Blessings go to those who are kind to the weak. The Lord rescues them from trouble. He protects and restores and gives them life. Blessings go to those who are kind to the weak. The Lord protects them from their enemies. He brings them health and prosperity. Mm. Oh, 
how we need you. Oh, praise the Lord, God of Israel. From the beginning, everlasting. Faithful is our almighty King. From the beginning, everlasting. Oh, how much we need you, Lord. You give us the victory. Here we are in your presence forever, 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 forever. Forever, oh, praise the Lord God of Israel from the beginning, everlasting faithful is our. From the beginning, from the beginning, from the beginning, everlasting. presence as always. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God is good. Can you say amen? amen. How often is God good? All the, all the time. And all the time, God is good. Amen. Amen. Well, turn around and greet someone. Say, it's really good to see you this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, say, Pastor, what if I really ain't good to see him this morning? <laughs> then come on down here and we'll get you born again. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, you know, um, if y'all looked at the weather forecast yesterday, uh, it won't look good. Somebody prayed. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. And um, praise God. That is saying it's holding up to after four. Amen. Yeah. I mean, last night I started looking at it, it was 12, but then it went to two. Then it's now it's four. I don't even care if it rains. You know, um, uh, the guys cut our grass on the, you know, the they cut it on the fifth and the twentieth, and we got back yesterday from the beach and came over and brought some stuff over and thought, look at the grass, what in the world? Well, all that rain and it just so, <laughs> yeah, I mean it took off. Hallelujah! That's okay. We got nice areas that you know the the city that are mulched, so you don't have to step in grass. Uh, uh, hallelujah. And uh, so this, this is going to be a good day. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glad, so glad to have you. Uh, don't forget that following the morning service, we'll go outside for our very first in this location fellowship uh, like this. Out the, we, well, actually, we were talking on the way to church this morning. We were uh, thinking, well, you know, when we were in the business part, we really couldn't do outside because the kids were on the, con on the asphalt and fall down and get all skin up. That didn't really work. So we was always inside. Then we went to the community center. Well, that didn't really wasn't advantageous because we had to be out of there by 1 o'clock. We got all the dodgeball people showed up in their Daisy Dukes and their David Dukes. You had all the guys come in with these little skimpy shorts. I'm like, you don't have to wear that type of dodgeball in. Hallelujah. And then when we borrowed the other church, you know, during COVID, we couldn't really do anything because, you know, it wasn't our place. So. We're getting ready to have our first of many 
Can you say amen? We're excited. Hallelujah. It's a good thing. Glory to God. So um, that don't forget Wednesday night midweek service um, this week and the following week will probably be our last prayer service before church um, Bible study. And after that, we're going to be going back to um, Tuesday night Zoom prayer. Okay. All right. Um, I think Shannon and Nathan start next mo Monday and, or Tuesday and we start the following Tuesday, so the 15th. And then Dennis, you go back when? Now that you've gone to a different. 18th, okay. Okay, we, I think we go back on the 16th. And so, hallelujah. School's here. Yeah, yeah. I know they, some of you are thinking, hey, Alice Cooper says school was out forever. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. He, you remember he was doing drugs. <laughs> hallelujah. Praise God. So uh, praise the Lord. Don't, don't forget that. And then September 25th, mark your calendars, plan on being in town, rearrange plans. It is homecoming and church dedication. We're dedicating the building. We have uh, Reverend Tad Gegrich. Uh, um, is it Gegrich or Gregrich? Gregrich. Yeah, I always get that mixed up. Um, he is the dean of Rainbow Bay Training, Bible Training College in Tulsa, Oklahoma, or Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. Um, and he's been with us one time before he'll be with us and doing the church dedication service. And uh, then we're having dinner on the grounds, uh, actually looking at having it catered possibly. I got a call into a caterer right now. Actually, I got it in the Sidwills. And um, they're, um, they're working up a price right now for us. Hallelujah. And um, so that's coming up, and that's going to be a great time. It's going to be our first homecoming here. We, we move away from the anniversary. You know, we used to always do anniversary service. We're changing it to homecoming. That, that, that's that's the term I grew up with, you know, you know that's what everybody grew up with, homecoming. Okay, well, what does that mean? If you did, used to go to church here, ever visit church here, you come home, visit again. Amen, hallelujah. And um, and then so we'll go out and have, we'll have dinner on the grounds after the service, and um, praise the Lord. And then sometime late in the fall, um, we will be having our Eastern Carolina, uh, our down east Eastern Carolina barbecue and fried chicken. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Karen's going, yeah. Uh, Pastor Ed's uh, being, you know, Eastern style, vinegar based, pork hand chopped barbecue. Hallelujah. It'll, 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 it'll put a plate on top of your head, tongue, you beat your brains out trying to get to it. I'm telling you, that's good stuff. Hallelujah. Brother Bill, am I right? Amen. Yeah, he's a, Brother Bill was Lexington style. We converted him, finally got him saved. Hallelujah. You converted him over to Easter style. Glory to God. All right. Now, I see some folks. Uh, now, y'all are visiting this morning. Who are you? I'm your visitor. Okay. All right. Well, glad to have you. Thank you. All right. Well, we're so happy to have you. And that, this is the grandson, right? It's Eric. It's, it's Eric? Yeah. Well, good to have you. And, and you are? I'm Reed's son, Jody. Reed's son, Jody. Well, Jody, nice to have you. I forgot it again. I forgot it again. Yep. Riley. All right. And your next door neighbor. All right. Let's tell them. Now, let's do a better job this time. Let's tell them we're glad to have them this morning. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glad you could come be with us. And uh, uh, the little guy's been with us before, but you know, we're glad to have you this morning. Hallelujah. And make sure you stay after. We got dogs, burgers, you know, baked beans. What else we got? Oh, Janie's homemade chili to put on the dogs and the burgers. Hallelujah. For all those who don't like pork, they are all beef hot dogs. Hallelujah. Got, uh, I think we've got some desserts back there. And we got little um, push ups, you know, the, the little plastic things, rip off those, those uh, pure sugar, colored sugar water. All right. Got those. Hallelujah. Well, actually, we were going to try to have um, um, snow cones. We couldn't find our machine. Don't know where it is, and couldn't find anybody that had one in town. Homecoming. <laughs> all right. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, so glad to have you all this morning. Praise the Lord. Please come back and be with us again. Soon. Soon and very soon. All right. Anyway, it's time to give. If you need an offering envelope, uh, they're on the seat backs in front of you. If you're somewhere you need can't find one, raise your hand, Brother Joe will get you. If you're giving by cash, I mean cash app or PayPal, you can go ahead and, and do that. The information is up here. It's Faith Victory Church for the cash app. 
it is donations at fbc.org uh, for PayPal. And you could do that. And uh, that will go straight into the account. Glory to God. And uh, soon, once we get all the paperwork back from the state of North Carolina, we are in the, um, we have applied for the legal name change from Faith and Victory Church to Expedition Church. They've cashed our checks, so we know they got our stuff. Okay? So that, but the state doesn't do anything quick. Uh, and so that's in process. Once that is in full blown uh, settled and we get the paperwork back from the state of North Carolina, then these cash app and PayPal things will be changing to reflect um, the legal name change. Okay? So just be aware of that. Uh, we will make, we continue using this until. And then when that's done, then we will make the announcement and tell you what date we're going to be making the change and when you have to stop using the old and start using the new. You can't have two hashtags on the same account. They won't let you do it. I, I, I thought, well, that'd be the easy way. We just get a second hashtag on the same account. Nah, they won't let you do it. Okay, sorry. Uh, I am too, but praise the Lord. All right? You know, <coughs> Jesus said to give, and it shall be given unto you. How did he say it would be given to you? Good measure, pressed down, shake it together, and running over. Praise God. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. See, you know, when God said God's name is, is, is El Shaddai, not El Chipo. Okay? He's a God that's more than enough, not the God that's half enough. Ever, anybody ever pray, oh, I got this. God, if you could just, if you could just get me 500 or 1,000, I can make up the rest. See, you're, you're limiting God. God's bigger than that. If you're $1,000 in debt, he's a $2,000 God. He's more than enough. He gives exceedingly abundantly beyond all we can ask or even think. And I can think pretty big. Him, I can think big. I mean, I, I can think lifestyles of the rich and famous. Okay? Hallelujah. So, you know, God, God is the God who blesses abundantly. And he said, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. It is not the Lay's potato chip blessing. I mean, how many go get your big bag? You know, it's all puffed out there. You can hear the chips in there. You pull it apart and whoo, and suddenly down here in the bottom is your chips. <laughs> you know, when you get it goes packed by uh, weight, not volume. Well, why did you waste all that sp that paper and all that stuff to put that much chips in there? Yeah, y'all hear you going home. Hallelujah. All right. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the tithe and the offering that's brought into the storehouse. We thank you that heaven's windows are opened unto the people, that you empty out on them blessings they don't have room enough to receive. Your word declares that you are the one that gives us the power to get wealth, that we may establish your covenant in the earth. So, Father, I thank you that as we prosper and we move forward in financial independence, that we're able to fund the gospel around the world and take this message of life, liberty, and uh, eternal salvation to the, to the nations, to hurting people, to bring deliverance to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, Brother Joe, go ahead and receive the in-house offering. Those who sent yours, we thank all of you. And once he is finished, Children's Church will be dismissed. Not yet. Hold on. On your marks. Get set. Hold it. We're going to let Brother Joe get that door up so nobody runs into it. Go! <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, youth Church will be this Wednesday night. Hallelujah. Uh, Jess and Cap leave Tuesday week for Turkey. Um, to go on the, the uh, missions trip to Turkey. Um, I know that what I heard last was Jesse is preaching to the youth at the conference on um, in a service, and um, this is the church planting um, planning event for mid the Middle East, North Africa, MENA, for Rama Bible Training College expansion around the world. We have over two. I don't have all the numbers, but we have over two hundred and fifty Bible schools around the world. Uh, averaging between ten and fifteen thousand students per month around the world, we have I know we've crossed a hundred thousand graduates, one hundred twenty thousand graduates now, hallelujah around the world. Now the main campus in Tulsa, I forgot how many that one is, like forty or something uh, over the, over the years, um, which is where I went in eighty one. They went in the uh, two thousand eleven to thirteen, 
Hallelujah. And um, so we're excited about what we're doing as, as an organization around the world, preaching the gospel. Uh, God is working supernaturally. Amen? Amen. And it's awesome to see what God's doing in the earth. Praise God. All righty. Well, so happy to have you. We're going to be talking today and sharing today um, in our series, The Church and Her Mission. And let's read our foundation text from Acts chapter 2, verses 42 through 45. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many sign, wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things in common, and sold the possessions and goods and part of them to all men as every man had need. Now, <clears throat> the last part of this, you've you got to take into uh, uh, a um, contextual perspective as to why they were doing that. Because um, when the Jews got born again, they were disenfranchised. They lost everything. They lost their inheritance. Their families disowned them. In many cases, they actually had funerals for their children if they became a Christian because they were dead to them. They were no longer um, part of their family. And so these people were destitute. To serve Christ, they became destitute. And so the church came together. And, you know, now if a rich person got saved, they had still had their money. But if you were the heir, dependent upon your inheritance, you were tough luck. So the church did what the church does. It met the needs. Amen? So this is not, you know, say that everybody in the, the church needs to sell everything they got, and everybody come together, and we all just live equally in a communistic mindset. No, this was a necessity to take care of those who, because of their commitment to Christ, lost everything. All right? It wasn't because they were lazy. It wasn't because they wouldn't work. It was because they made a commitment to be born again and to serve God, and they lost everything. So that, that's just kind of a side thought there. Um, we talked about the first week. The main purpose of the church. Everybody know what the main purpose of the church is? To evangelize. The everything we do, understand this, children's church, youth church, fellowships after church, uh, barbecue fellowships, inviting people to come by barbecue, um, you know, services, prayer service, everything we're doing is aimed towards equipping saints to go win the lost and then bring them into the kingdom of God. <clears throat> that is our mission. Now, as a, you know, neo-Pentecostal um, movement, you know, the word of faith is what they refer to as new, Pente new Pentecostal, neo-Pentecostalism, uh, not the old-fashioned beehive hairdo Pentecostalism, which I grew up in. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah, I can imagine, I can imagine Shannon in the burlap sack, white dust and powder and that beehive thing going on there. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, Pentecostals and neo-Pentecostals are really the same animal. Okay. Um, but... Um, you know, we, we kind of, we began to focus on the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit, getting people filled with the Holy Ghost. That was our, and, and, and that's great. That's not the end calling of what we're to do. As a matter of fact, the baptism of the Holy Spirit was to equip you to go do evangelism. Tarry ye in Jerusalem until you be endued with a power from on high. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Okay? So even... Pentecostals, you know, we, we say, well, well, we'll let the Baptists get them saved and we'll get them filled. That, no. We're all supposed to be getting them saved. I mean, Baptists, Pentecostals, Lutherans, Episcopals, Presbyterians, Catholics, I mean, the whole bunch are supposed to be getting folks saved. Hello. I mean, and we thank God for all the, in the in revelation we have and all the things we walk in and in the Spirit. But everything is, is to build in us and make us disciples for Christ and make us um, more effective in reaching the lost. So our first mission, our main mission, remember Jesus said, what was the great commission? Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. These signs shall follow them that believe. Amen. Wait, wait. Go get them saved. Everybody said, go get them saved. So my mission is to go get them saved. Now stop hanging out waiting for your calling. I remember when I was in, uh, you know, a couple few times I went back to Ramah um, after I graduated in 1981. 
uh, Pastor Hagen would get up and say, now listen, guys, y'all get away from the command post. I mean, there's a big mall there down the road from uh, Rama called Woodland Hills Mall. It's a, it's a I mean, it's, it makes um, Four Seasons look like a corner store. It's huge. It's a huge mall. And, um, and so you go in the mall, and there'd be Rama graduates everywhere in there. What are you doing? I'm waiting on my ministry. What are you doing? I'm waiting on my ministry. What are you doing? You wait. What church go? I, they all went to some big church in Tulsa, FCF, Faith Christian Fellowship, or Rama Bible Church, or Victory Church over there, Billy Joe Daugherty's, or, or Buddy Harrison's, or, or Rama. They all went to one of the big churches in town, and they were waiting on their ministry. They were waiting for somehow or another the skies to open up, Jesus to come down with a flaming sword, knight them to the ministry, and send them out <laughs> with a bucket of gold so they don't have to work. Hello. See, and there were a lot of places all around the place that need somebody just to show up if you even had to work a job and be a bivocational bi pastor or a bivocational minister and do those things and get the, get the law saved, do the work of the ministry. So pastor would get up and say, I'll, I'll get away from the command post. Get away from Bible school. Get away from Tulsa. Oh, Tulsa was cool. It's the Christian Mecca. Hello? I mean, you know, you go to the atmosphere is different. Yeah, because everybody's just hanging out, just love the Lord. But we need, we need people in Timbuktu. We need people in Pleasant Garden, North Carolina. Hello? And Rural Hall. Are you in Sophia? We, we need the gospel out here, not just in the Mecca of the, of the Christian church. So we lost, in somehow or another, we lost our identification with our purpose to reach the lost. And so we, we, we're talking here, our mission is to reach the lost. So everything else we do is founded upon the mindset that I'm equipping you and that we're equipping you to reach the lost and make disciples of men. Okay? All right. Secondly, last week we talked about <clears throat> the unifying of the saints around the doctrine of the church. Now, it's important, we talked about last week, how important it is to be sound doctrinally. It's hard to reach the loss if you're a squirrel. <laughs> it, I mean, when you show up looking like Ka from Jungle Book with your eyes spinning, it's hard to get through to people. Are y'all here? Trust in me. Oh, trust in me. And you're like Mowgli. No. See, like I said, granola Christians are not needed. You know, that was that's fruits, nuts, and flakes all put together in the same box. Okay? We don't need granola Christians. We need sound doctrinal Christianity. Amen. And we need, and listen, the Bible talks about <clears throat> growing up in Christ and not being children who are tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine. There's always something new coming down the pipe. You turn on the TV this week or the radio this week or just go talk to somebody with the spinning eyes, and there's a new doctrine. We had somebody show up at the church a few weeks, uh, a couple of months ago. Wouldn't tell me that all the trees in the Bible represent demons. I mean, he's all, ooh, like, man, I've heard this stuff before. Bye-bye. We don't need flaky. Hello? I know one guy told me one time, he said, you know, that the mustard seed represents, you know, uh, the branches of a tree when it grows up. And the crows that came and sat in the branches are the demons. And now you read too much into it. Okay? This is not Harry Potter. All right? I mean, we're, not, we're, not, we're not writing a novel for, you know, uh, a sequel novel to Lord of the Rings. All right? So we need to be sound in doctrine. What do we need to be sound in doctrine? We need to stay f founded in the apostles' doctrine. Stable, solid, and stay there. And if more revelation comes than we've had before in the past, we don't need to be crazy about it. Okay? Just like people have taken what we call the, you know, the, the grace message in the past 15 years, so, and some, they've gone crazy with it in some cases. Oh, I can do anything I want to do, and I'm still under grace. I'm going to heaven. I don't have to tithe. I don't have to give because God's going to prosper me anyway. Really? Have you read the New Testament? 
I've read the New Testament, and they don't say that. Hello? Jesus said, anybody know who Jesus is? Head of the church, second person of the Godhead, the authority of authorities. He said, give, and it shall be given unto you. He did not say, lay on the front row of the church, say I'm under grace, and you're going to get it anyway. As a matter of fact, Paul said, he that soweth sparingly shall reap sparingly. You know, Paul, the guy that everybody calls the grace preacher, Paul said, amen, if you sow sparingly, you'll reap sparingly. Every man according as he purposes in his own heart. Amen. Now, that Georgia prophet about had it right. This guy used to be on the radio years ago, and he was so flaky. But uh, you know, I, I was a young Christian, I heard, and I heard one service, I thought, that's it, I don't need that. I, I was smart enough to figure out that guy was crazy. But he, he did have this right. He said, you know, we need you to send some money. Some folks send $100, and some folks send $10, and some folks send $20. And he said, some folks send no dollars. And he said, and, and as the Scripture saith, nothing from nothing leaveth nothing. I took my strong concordance out. I couldn't find nothing from nothing leaveth nothing. I, I just didn't find that one. Amen. I didn't have the electronic version back then. I had the guy to do the search. It won't end there. Okay. So being solid doctrinally, being founded solid in the doctrine of the, of the apostles, staying steadfast in that is important to your ability to be a good evangelist. Now, I'm not talking about the gift of the, of the, of the evangelist who travels. I'm just talking about a Christian who goes out and shares Jesus. You need to be sound. Now, listen, you can get away with it as a baby Christian just out of zeal because you're just so excited about Jesus and you don't know nothing. That's okay. We'll take that. Amen? But you need to grow. And as you grow, you don't need to be ka. So I say, I'm not ka. Come on. I'm not ka. My eyes don't spin when I witness. All right. Okay? And... Um, if you've, got a, if, you're, if you've got a box of granola Christianity at home, go ahead and get rid of it. Okay. But today we want to talk about fellowship. All right. Um, remember that they said there, they continue steadfast in the apostle doctrine and fellowship. The word fellowship comes from the Greek koinonia, uh, which is out of the uh, classical Greek word group of koinos, K-O-I-N-O-I-S, koinos. And um, koinos was the lead word that these uh, different variants came from. And it, it meant to have in common, to be equal, to have fellowship, communion, to participate. And in classical Greek philosophical usage, uh, they, they really majored on this, this fellowship communion idea, okay, and even to the point of, you know, we fellowship around doc, uh, uh, sacrifice, sacrificials, the demons and, you know, false gods and that kind of stuff. Uh, although this same word is used in reference to the Lord's table. Okay. So breaking the breaking of bread and so forth. All right. But in that classical Greek usage, that's how it's used. It's only used three times in the Septuagint. Only one of those is canonical. Um, you, uh, it was used in 2nd Maccabees or 3rd Maccabees and in the Wisdom of Solomon, which are considered apocryphal books. Um, but in the, um, uh, where was it used? In its one time in the Old Testament that was uh, 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 Hosea. There we go. It was, it, was, it was in Hosea. It was used in a canonical book. Uh, still not with the quite New Testament meaning. It's used 19 times in the New Testament. Okay, the Greek New Testament. 13 of which Paul uses. Okay. Paul takes this word and moves it from a surface, a surface outward. We're sitting down at the table and we're, you know, we're eating together or we're, um, you know, we're equal together or we have certain things in common. Now, how many have noticed that in the church, oftentimes people have things in common kind of migrate to one another. Well, that is the classical Greek use of that word. It's not the New Testament use of that word. Okay? And so in Paul's writings, he begins to uh, take what they, and as it's used in the book of Acts, he begins to give a narrower, more pointed understanding of the use of koinonia and focuses on the participation side 
of this word, that we participate in the things of the Spirit. We participate in, in Christ. We are participants together. So if we have fellowship in the Spirit, we are participating in the things of the Spirit, not simply hanging out together. Okay? We have a bond. There is a common entity. There is a common bond that draws us together, but we are to draw together in a reciprocity. Reciprocity, I'm sorry. I, missed. I was working on that word again last night. I said, I got to get that word right. Reciprocity, meaning reciprocal. God, what? God loves us. We love God. We're participating in this relationship. This word is used not only vertical, man to God and God to man, but horizontal, man to man. Okay? And so in the body of Christ, koinonia, is, is the participation in our common bond with Christ and the things concerning Christ, the Spirit of God, the brethren. And so this is deeper than Jerry and Janice taking Dick and Ellie out to lunch after church. Now, that kind of fellowship is still needed. Don't take me wrong. That's what we're going to do after church. We're going out here and fellowshipping. Okay? But not in this sense. Because, you see, in this sense, it doesn't matter if Jerry and Janice have anything in common with Rita and her son. They're not going out to that because they, 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 they like the same things. Or like to eat at the same restaurants. This is we're participating in the things of God. In the, in the sanctuary, the holy things of God. We're, 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 we are participators in being stewards of the mysteries of God. Can you say amen? amen. And so it doesn't matter your background, your history, your ethnic, ethnicity, your gender. Of which there are two. That's all there is. Okay? There, there's not a, there's not a, there ain't even a third. Forget that. Anything after two is not right. <clears throat> okay? We are, we, we, we are not coming into the church. This is why you can come, we should be able to come to the church and no matter what our background, no matter what our natural Makeup, family, origin, anything, you know, our life experience doesn't matter because we come and we koinonia, have fellowship, participate in the things of God with our common bond of being born again. We being many are one body. Amen compacted together by that which every joint supplieth. Ephesians chapter 4. Each part of the body has a role to play in this, and it is a reciprocal relationship that goes on here. <clears throat> I draw from you, you draw from me. I draw from God. He, um, amen? I draw from God, I, I share with you. It's, it's, it's we're all participating. It's, so Paul's major emphasis of this word is participation. It is, which means it's not passive. It's active. Now, my wife's daddy was Cherokee. I mean, he was 68 years old, didn't have a gray hair. I mean, uh, I used to, we used to joke, say, I told, used to tell her, because he, he had a brother who was like his, you know, the mini-me to him. Same color skin, I mean, that Cherokee skin, dark black hair, that, the, the wide shoulders, the big belly, and the no butt. <laughs> Cherokee, through and through. He said, I used to say, honey, if we took your daddy and Uncle Mac up to Cherokee and dumped them out, we wouldn't be able to find them. Well, one time we were staying over in Cherokee camping, and they had been over in Maggie Valley, the, the, the husbands and wives, and they came over, and we were going to meet them down by the O'Connell Lefty River there in Cherokee, and they were going to go fishing. We were going to go and meet them to have lunch together. So we got over there. We found Miss Glisson and the other Miss Glisson and um, Miss Francis. That's, that was Mr. Mack's wife. And um, we, we've, been look, we've been looking for her, her daddy and uncle for some time. We finally found them. So, 
Say, hey, yeah, you know, how you do. Uh, where, now, where's Uncle Mac Mr. and Boss Man? They said, they're right there. They sure were. I couldn't, I couldn't find them. They were so Cherokee. I mean Cherokee. Yeah, they just they blended right in with the tribe. Now, why was I going to bring that up? Well, you see, now, Mr. Glisson, his idea of fellowship was to sit there and go, mm-hmm. You ask him a question, and the, the biggest answer you got about 95% of the time was, mm-hmm. He didn't talk. He didn't like being around people. Cherokee are still that way. They want to live a mile apart from the closest neighbor. And if you show up on the property, they want to shoot first, ask questions later. I know this because they had a college friend who's, who came to uh, High Point University on full scholarship from the casino up there. You know, casino gives all the Cherokees. If you're, all, if you're a member of the tribe, you get to you know, go to college for free anywhere in the world. They pay for it. And uh, he was saying, he says, yeah, I'm, I'm not going there trying to get people to register to vote. And, you know, I'm not sure if I'm going to get excited or not. And I live on the res. <laughs> they, don't trust, they don't even trust them. <laughs> Hallelujah. And, uh, <clears throat> but, you know, because, they don't, you know, they just don't like people. They don't want to be around people. Well, see, we can't come into church like that. Amen. So, well, I like to have a church that, you know, that everybody just loves to do this. Well, that's great. We, it's good to have a good atmosphere. But you see, if we learn that our koinonia, our fellowship, is Christ-centered and based, and it's a reciprocal between us and Christ and us and our fellow man of the things of God, then we can get past this socialized, socialized side. Yes. Now, that can develop, but we shouldn't be, you know, all hopping up to church because he got a great women's ministry. Uh, they play, what's that going Bunkum or whatever that game is? Bunko or, huh? Bunko. And we play Bunko every Thursday night. Ooh. Okay. But what are you doing for the kingdom? Well, well you know, I go to church every once in a while. You know. um, that's not what we're talking about. See, the, the fellowship of the church, this mystery that we're connected to, of the new birth, the family of God, the body of Christ. It's about us participating together in the things of God. Whereas whether I've got in something in common with you or not in the natural doesn't matter. I have Christ in common with you. And now I can go out and you can go out and we can share our faith and get people saved. What? Because we, we have something in common that's beyond you know, this ain't the rich, you know, I mean, Paul got on them. Y'all remember in the Lord's table, he rebuked them over, over the, when he wrote to the church at Corneth and said, you come together, you know, one, one over here has got, you know, they got, they come to, you know, the rich folks came in with all their food and their wine and all this stuff, getting drunk in church. I mean, that's just great. That's just great, guys. Wait, way to go with your testimony. Then you got over here folks who, who can't even eat. Amen. Well, they had created cliques in the church based on the classical use of the word fellowship and not on Paul's use of the word. They weren't participating in the body of Christ. They were participating in socialization. Amen. And see, we need to be, because let me turn the air conditioner down a little bit. I don't know why well, I decided to stop where it is, but I need it a little cooler. I don't know about you, it's starting to get a little stuffy. Thank you, Joe. All right. Um, and so we get, well, a lot of times we'll get people going to church because they got cool social stuff. Hello? Well, I'm, not, I'm not against the social stuff. You understand what I'm saying? But if that's what we're doing and that's what it becomes, what have we got? We got a social club. We got the YMCA or the Rotary Club. Or the Lions Club. Hello? We don't have the body of Christ maturing and developing and becoming uh, preachers of the truth, the preachers of the gospel to the hurting and the lost. We're trying to get people to come to our church because we got a cool men's ministry. 
I mean, they've gone so far now as they'll get together and have rum and smoke cigars. <laughs> I mean, I had to pick my mouth up three times when I heard that. I mean, I had to go sanitize it because it was just all over the floor. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. One women's ministry got together, and the pastor's wife taught them how to pole dance. I think they missed the word's meaning. Don't know, but I'm pretty sure they missed it. Because they definitely aren't handling the holy things of God. Pole dancing. Are you people start raving crazy? See, when we, when we focus on these things outwardly, now let me say this, what, what a lot of people do is they try to go outwardly and work inwardly. Well, we don't, we can't do that. The new birth is an inward work that works outwardly. It's transformative from the inside out, not the outside in. Amen. Now, you may look like you're doing the same thing, but you ain't. Because you cannot change the outside to fix the inside. You've got to fix the inside to change the outside. So it is a work that starts in the new birth, being born again. Jesus didn't say you need to, you know, like one guy came in, you know, old Pentecostals didn't believe in jewelry. Okay, you couldn't, women couldn't cut their hair, they couldn't, couldn't wear, and, and women definitely couldn't wear makeup. Now they wore, I don't know if you've ever seen it. If, if you've ever seen it, or if you haven't seen it, you don't want to see it. <laughs> that old white dusting powder women used to wear. And they, they wouldn't wear makeup. They put that dust and powder. They already honkified out the roof. And then they put white dust and powder all over it. And, and then they'll put a little of that clear lip gloss on. No, no, no color. <laughs> and come to church. Death warmed over three times is what they looked like. I mean, you could, you, you could just go ahead and put them in the casket. They were ready. <laughs> Yellow hair wrapped up in that beehive hair, do. Yeah. But then like Brother Hagin said, they had all that, but they had a tongue long enough to lick the, the, sit in the kitchen and lick the spoon in the living room. Hello. We can't fix the outside. So having a bunch of social stuff outside and not working from the inside is counterproductive. I believe in the social stuff outside. That's what we, like I said, we're having the fellowship. We have our Eastern Carolina thing. We're going to do... But it, we have to understand, we come in here. We come into this building. We sit in these pews, or pew, technically pew chairs. That's what they're called. Because they, they gang together. So they're pew chairs. All right? So they're modern pews. Now, if you like the end caps, we can buy them. They make them. So screw right onto the end. Got wood carving everything. Makes it look just like an old-fashioned pew. Ain't happening. Anyway. It just ain't happening. All right. Too much trouble to put them on, take them off for one thing. All right. But when you come in here, it is not so we can go have a hot dog together after church. It is so we can participate in the things of God together and grow together and iron sharpen iron together and become stronger together to reach the lost together to do the work of the ministry together that is our this is why we come so we mature in christ and we bring our supply to the table go to ephesians chapter 4 where are you in your notes not even close there's things in my notes that are helping me, but they're not, you know, where we are. Let's start in verse oh, 1. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you are worthy of the vocation wherewith you were called. With all lowliness of mind and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. Now, let me say something. See, when we click off, getting a little clicks in the church, 
Hello. I've got my little click. Now, we've had it in the church before, and it caused problems. Hello? Had, had the, had the who's baby potty trained first club. Had, that, that was one of our clubs. Wasn't officially named that, but that's what it was. Competition on who could potty train first. Yeah, we lost. Nathan was terrible. <coughs> Thought, was that boy ever going to potty train? You know, he had a, well, mine potty trained at 13 months. Nathan was two years or something. Well, but you know what? Now he's, I'm glad he's, he's not here today. He's, uh, him, he went with his fiance's family. They wanted him to come to the beach for their vacation this week. So he's down there with the family. And um, it's not on his resume. He applied for jobs, and nowhere on there did it say, when did you potty train? <laughs> it's just not there. Okay? <laughs> okay? So, but, you know, little clicks in the church. This group hangs out together, and this group hangs out together, and this group hangs out together, and we got this little thing going on. We got the, the white Christians over here, and we got the black Christians over here, and we got the mixed Christians over here, and come on now. See, we brought the world into the church. And then we try to claim Christ. But we're doing all this surface stuff and not endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit, the unity of the spirit, the unity of the spirit, not the unity of your flesh, not the unity of your culture. Yes. Hello. Hello. Not the unity of third or fourth wave feminism. The unity of whatever. You know? Toxic masculinity. No. That, see, the world needs to be checked out before you ever check in. Because we come in here and we're endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Amen? There is one body, one spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is above all, through all, and in you all. Where, where is he? He's in where? In where? You all. Or as we would like, if this was the southern translation, in y'all. Okay? But unto every one of us, everybody say everybody, everybody say everyone is giving grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Now remember, this koinonia is vertical and horizontal. It is God and man and man and man. Okay? So we are given grace. There are gifts in each of us. There are graces in each of us. That, that horizontal koinonia needs to be able to distribute back and forth one to the other. And that comes in the bond of the Spirit. That comes in the unity of the Spirit. Wherefore he, uh, he saith when he ascended upon high and led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it? He also descended first into the lower parts of the earth. He that descended is the same also that he ascended up far into the heavens that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Now, there are ministry gifts. Apostles, 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 prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. They're your, what we would refer to as your pulpit ministry, those who teach and train the body of Christ. Okay? They are gifts. They are callings. They are, we, some people refer to them as offices in the body of Christ. Listen to what their purpose is. Next verse, 12. For the perfecting. Then a Greek word per, translated perfecting really means maturing. In modern English, and, you know, King James probably back then it meant that, would, you know, 1611, it probably carried that, that, that maybe that uh, vernacular idea. But in, the, in modern English, we would translate it mature, okay, for the maturing of the You ain't going to be perfect until Jesus shows up, you get another body. Hello? Why? This body is corruptible. So you can't be perfected until you get the incorruptible body. Okay? So we're not talking about perfection, flawlessness. We're talking about here for the perfecting, for the maturing of the saints, for the work of the ministry. 
for the edifying, uh, edifying of the body of Christ. Notice what the maturing of the saints does. The saints mature and do they, they do what? The work of the ministry. Well, we hired the preacher. He's supposed to come in here and do it all. That ain't what the Bible says. Hello? We're going to show up on Sunday and say, Lord, you keep him humble. We'll keep him poor. If we don't like what he does, we're going to vote him out in four years. I've been to 2B churches like that. They spend three years strategizing how to get rid of the newest pastor. I, told, I, had, a, I had a relative one time came to me and said, well, brother so-and-so, this man was a great te Bible teacher. He wasn't a preacher. Now you listen, I know we were Pentecostal holiness, and you're supposed to preach. No, that's what everybody thought. And that man, every time that man tried to preach, it just didn't work. He wasn't a preacher. He was a teacher. And people wouldn't let him stay in his calling. Hello? Because they wanted, they wanted somebody to, you know, walk around and spit cotton to the fourth row and get red in the face and wipe sweat. Well, I mean, there are people like that. There are preachers like T.D. Jates can sweat better than anybody you've ever seen. Man goes through four or five handkerchiefs of service. All right? I get that. But if you're a preacher, you're a preacher. And if you're not, you're not. Just yelling, don't make it work. Now, I can preach. I do preach. Um, not as much in the church. You know, if I travel, I preach more when I'm traveling. Man, I, I went to the Estonians. You're talking about Stoic. They made Cherokee look like they were a wildfire. I mean, I, I went over there, and after a week, I had them running around the room. Yeah, they were just, they went, they were gone. They went crazy. But, they were, they, but see, they, they thought Americans made faces. Because we walk down the street like this and say, see, see, hey, Jerry, smile and walk by. And they call it making faces. And so they wanted to be pure all the time. So they would just go by and go, hey. And they would change their expression. You know, they, well, they, were, they were Vikings. They were real, very stoic. Anyway, but I look at, I, we loosened them up a little bit. Hallelujah. All right. What? Yeah. Yeah, we poured it all in there. So for the perfecting, the maturing of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. What? Till we all come in the unity of what? The faith. We're not unified on what soap opera you shouldn't be watching that you like. Okay? I'm just messing with you now. That one-eyed devil. I grew up hurt here when I grew up on the devil, television was a one-eyed devil. There was a one-eyed devil sitting in your house. He'd go home and hide in his closet and watch it. Unto the unity of the faith, unto the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a mature man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie and wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love, may grow up into him in all things, even the head which is Christ. Now, what are we supposed to be doing? We're to grow up into him. So it doesn't matter if you grew up... Um, on the other side of the tracks. If you grew up, um, now that, I'm just going to use some terms. Now, don't be offended. Trailer park trash. In the projects. From the ghetto. From the hood. From uptown. From the, you know, highfalutin places. See? None of those things have to carry, it should, it should carry over into this walk with God. Amen. Now, if, I don't know y'all if y'all know this. Now, my wife grew up poor. So poor you could see through the floor of her house. They had, they had central heat. They had one room that had oil heater in it, and they sat in that room to warm up the night before they went to bed. There was no heat anywhere else in their house. She worked, got a job, worked, and made, made enough money to buy an electric blanket so she wouldn't freeze at night. They used to pull the head out from under the cover and could blow smoke in their bedroom. Okay? So, you know, there ain't no... She, well, she, she grew up privileged. That girl didn't grow up privileged. Now, now according to her, I did. You know, I, was, I was rich, you know, because we had central air. We had carpet. <laughs> yeah, we had carpet in the house. Amen. Had central air conditioning. Woo, babies. Amen. For, now, now, when I was a kid, we didn't always have a car that had air conditioning. Remember, we used to have the 455 air conditioning. Four windows down, 55 miles an hour. 
with the little vent window turned in, so it brought the air in. Y'all remember that? I got a story I could tell, but I'm not going to tell it. You'll just have to hear it another day. How many want to hear it? You have to come back to another service. But speaking the truth of love, may grow up in him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that, this is this, by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working and the measure of every part, making increase of the body and unto the edifying of itself in love. Now, here we go. When we participate in fellowship, the fellowship of the Spirit, the fellowship of, uh, of, of the brethren, we are participating in our calling with God, in our walk with God, with the graces of gifts that God has given to us to help strengthen and supply one another for the work of the ministry, to go out and do the work of God, to carry this message of life to hurting people. <clears throat> that you could have come from the ghetto or you could have come from Saks Fifth Avenue. And it doesn't matter because we are participating in the bond of unity in the fellowship of the Spirit with Jesus Christ. And you're not looked down on because you drove up in a vehicle that looks like it needs termite inspection. And the other guy drove up in a chauffeured limousine. When we come into the kingdom of God, all that no longer has meaning. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, preacher, I'm going to tell you something now. Uh, it does have meaning. It has meaning to me. You've got to drop it and learn to live in the realm of the spirit. And if you only want to go to church, if you're rich and you only want to go to church with rich folks, there's a problem. Because you, you're a click. And if you want to go to church because there's rich people in there, you've got a problem. Because you've got, you got a prejudice against them. Because, and the only way we're going to rid ourselves of the bonds of the past is to live in the bond of fellowship in Christ in the present and the future. To be free from those things. Where they don't govern and control our lives. Amen. Paul, Paul wrote an amazing statement. You know, Paul, now listen, remember Saul, before he became Paul, was a zealot. He was a religious zealot. He hunted Christians down to feed them to lions. Anybody found in the way, he was going to take bound to Jerusalem, have them tried, and then fed to the lions. He's not a really cool guy. When they stoned Stephen to death, he was a young man. And he was over there holding the cloaks or coats of all those who were stoning Stephen. And the Bible says, and he was consenting unto his death. It pleased him for them to stone Stephen to death. Hello. So Paul wasn't really that cool. Well, Saul wasn't. Paul was. Paul was really cool. Okay? He was referred to as the destroyer. But he says this in, in, later in his life, in his ministry. He says, this one thing I do, this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, I press toward the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. And when we come into the body of Christ and we begin to koinonia with God and man, then we leave the past behind. We become a new creature in Christ. Amen? We become bearers and stewards of the mysteries of God together. Whether you're wearing a $400,000 Tiffany diamond ring or you're wearing a, a ring for the Cracker Jack box for your wedding band. We are bearers and not only that, we are each graced with gifts to supply the body. Amen. So your unique aspect of supplying the body is much needed 
Forget all the other external stuff. Y'all hear you going home. You are valuable. And when we will see the value in each other as we recognize that we are participants together. Now, I grew up, um, okay, I'm going to get it done before 12 today. Now that I said that, I'll have, you know, how many give me five more minutes? One, two. That's only 10, guys. Oh, actually, Chris held up two fingers. That's 15. Oh, two minutes. No, 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 no. That's, that's, that's five and 10. Okay. Now, I grew up in, in a small town called Aden, North Carolina. Um, that's about 10 miles out of Greenville. We are um, infamously known, so you may not know this, as the first domestic terrorist attack on a public school in America. Um, we were having race riots in the fall of 1971, okay? And I was, at the middle, I was at the middle school. I was eighth grade at middle school. My brother was in high school at the high school. And it was the very first year of a uh, consolidated desegregation high school. So it took Grifton High School, a town, town 10 miles from Aden, South Aden High School, which was the African-American school in Aden, and Aden High School, and merged them into one high school and called it Aden Grifton High School. Okay, so we were bussed out in the country between the two towns. Um, right at the beginning of August or so, um, in Aden, there was an uh, African-American who was arrested and hung himself in the jail. But, you know, at that time in our history, if, if an African-American died in jail, it was racist and it was deliberate and somebody did it. Somebody killed him. Okay? So the SCLC comes up. They're marching the streets. We're in the curfew. We go down to our little town of Aden, 5,382. Salute. Um, Hee-haw. <laughs> Home of the Collard Festival. Um, and there'd be 80 state trooper cars sitting in our parking lot of the, of the town hall for that small town. We were under curfew. <coughs> you could not be out after, after dark. Weren't allowed because, because of the racial, I mean, it was, it was bad. They're out marching in the streets. We look out the window of our middle school, and they're out in the marching in the streets with dead chickens with their heads cut off, dropping blood in the street. And I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it's a mess. The, um, the um, Aiden Sports Shop, which was a guy who owned a, a, bo a, a boating outdoor sports thing, which was located at the edge of South Aiden. Aiden that's part of Aiden, but they always called that, that part. Y'all understand the era, right? Yeah. You know? The black folk lived in the south side or whatever. Whatever side of town it was, that was there. That was, so Aiden was South Aiden. Okay? And it was a white-owned shop, so it got hit with dynamite. Okay? Um, you know, windows were busted out. Things were going on. Well, then... And um, <clears throat> right after school started at Aiden Griffin, the very first year it's open. I mean, it's been open like three days. Um, a girl's high school health class was supposed to meet in the auditorium. And they, for some reason, the council was God. Because uh, somebody got in there and put dynamite in the girl's bathroom in that auditorium and set it off. Now, it wasn't enough to blow, blow the walls out, but, it, you know, I mean, it could have been structurally set in the right place. Now, that kid got arrested and spent, got 42 years. And that still makes me mad because all the upper people who came into town and started trouble got him the dynamite. That kid didn't get that dynamite on his own. Somebody got it to him, you know. And uh, so, we're, you know, we're having racial riots going on. I mean, it's, it's, it's bad, so. Uh, but this is, the kind of, this is the town that I'm growing up in. We're having the new consolidated high school. Well, I, I, the interesting thing is, so my next year, I go in the 73, I start in the fall of 72, so a year later after the bombing, you know, things are still tense. But you know what I found out? Football changed that. We'd all walk out and get on the football field. We were teammates. Hello? We were buddies. I mean, if you're, if, you know, my African-American friend, uh, you know, uh, uh, not friend, uh, you know, but teammate, is running the football, I'm going to take out the next guy's head to make sure he gets the score. And things were built from us working together. We forgot, you know, that he lived in South Bay and I lived over in, 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 on Edgewood Street, a new development in town. Oh, yeah, brick house. I had a brick house. Hello? I'll tell you something. We worked the tobacco fields together. 
It didn't matter that, you know, we went and dropped you off at South Lane, then took me over to my brick house that I was growing up in. We worked together. And we wanted to get off early, so we worked together. Because <laughs> if you, you know, if you goofed off out in the back field, then it'd get about 3 o'clock, and you didn't want to be out there. Jerry, you know what I'm talking about. Priming backer, hanging backer. I mean, that, that was work. If you've never worked in tobacco, you ain't worked. I'm just telling you the truth. Am I right, am I right Jerry? I'm going to tell you right. That's the nastiest, hardest work I've ever done. It's hard work, especially trucking with a mule where you're leaned over priming tobacco and having to go in and put it on the cart for the mule to take to the barn, and you ride on all day until you get enough tobacco to hang a barn. Not bulk barns, old-fashioned stick barns. Hey, hey. You come in, you have to go hang it in the barn. Now we're still friends 45 years later. They're still friends. Right out of the middle of a racial upheaval, that thing that we had in common broke something. Are you here? Now, when we come into the church and we find our participation in Christ, and participation in supporting one another in the things with our gifts and callings, we transform our lives. So I don't, you know, I, people come up and say, you know, uh, now, do you know Janice or Jerry Dowd? Yeah, they're a member of our church. I don't go, yeah, they're black members of my church. I don't do that. I don't care. It's not, a, you know, they, they go, Dick Schubert. I don't say, oh, yeah, he's, 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 he's a, one of them gray-headed honkies in our church. <laughs> I don't do that. One pastor said, because I had somebody coming over to our church and said, y'all not be able to all them white legs and black legs running together. What in the world are you talking about? White legs and black legs running together. What you looking at your legs for anyway? <laughs> Who cares what color their legs are? You've got a grace. You've got a grace. You've got a grace. You've got a grace. You're gifted. You're gifted. And we're all suppliers, and we do that reciprocal supplying through our fellowship, our koinonia in the spirit of being in Christ, man and God and man to man, creating in us a harmonious entity called the church that has a mission. And it doesn't matter what color you are. It doesn't matter how much money you got in the bank. And it doesn't matter where you came from. What matters is accomplishing the mission of winning the lost to Christ. <clears throat> Amen? Amen. Hope you got something out of that. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you for the word. We thank you for bringing us into Koinonia. Teaching us the depth of our responsibility to bring our graces and giftings to the table, as it were, and to edify and to strengthen and to supply one another in the fellowship of the Spirit, in the mighty name of Jesus. Help us walk into deeper places together. Help us to be a three-fold cord that's not easily broken. Help us see our mission of winning the lost into the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you for your attention today. Thank you for um, giving yourselves to what we're, we were sharing. I believe if you'll take what we said, that'll help be helpful. Amen. And, and strengthen. Glad to have you. Now, do you live in this area or? Yeah, well, good to see you. Hope to see you again. You live right next door. Hope to see you again. All right. Um, glory to God. Um, we're going we're gonna to break here. Um, somebody can grab my wife. Let's find out because we're going to, they're, they're cooking. They're supposed to start cooking the hot dogs and hamburgers at quarter till. So hopefully everything's pretty close to being ready. Um, I'm trying to decide if we're just going to go ahead and pray in here or we're going to wait and go out, there, go out there and pray. Now, if you brought clothes to change into, you're welcome to change. All right? What? Am I still on? I didn't say goodbye. Hey, oh, sorry. Didn't say goodbye. 
All right. Listen, we love you. Thank you for joining us today here at Expedition Church of the Triad. I uh, look forward to having you with us again. Join us Wednesday nights at 7 and Sundays at 1030 for our live stream. If you live in the uh, Piedmont Triad area, the greater Greensboro area, we invite you to join us at 6302 Walter Wright Road here in um, Pleasant Garden, North Carolina. We're only 4.3 miles from Interstate 85 Elm Eugene exit. So um, it's look, like one pastor said, church alive is worth the drive. It's worth the drive to come here and be with us. We'd love to have you bring your family and uh, we, we would just love to have you be with us and receive from the things of God. Until we meet again, remember these words from 1 John chapter 5 verse 4, that whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. God bless you. See you next time.